Hi, good morning everyone. Thank you for tuning in. I want to share this information in regards to, well, it has to do with California, but then it also applies to all states. Now, this is not in regards to child support. It's in regards to um, that our sheriff's department has been using the Stingray surveillance tool to monitor people or to monitor suspected individuals and um you know here in sacramento as far as in, and also in orange county which is in southern california and now uh, this was back in 2015 i'm gonna put the link to our sacramento newspaper it's called the sac b and basically now uh the sacramento county sheriff's department is required for a judge approval before using this um, high texting rank surveillance tool and let me give you a little um, hindsight of my opinion um, and also some facts that I know. Like here in my town, um, I have seen, this is back in 2015, um, I've seen a lot of like Sacramento Sheriff Departments. They always park at a certain area. They run through the parking lot. They they tag license plates and then see where I live. There's a uh, Gwen Tower, which most people call it a cell phone tower, but it's not. It's a Gwen Tower. And basically, they when... Like, say if they want to monitor you, say, like, in, in my case, you know, I'm I'm highly controversial in regards to trying to get my case resolved in this court nonsense of child support. And what they'll do is they'll sit there, and then all of a sudden, your phone starts echoing, it starts cracking up, it cuts off. And then especially if they're looking for a suspect who's dealing illegally or dealing illegal activity as far as drugs or whatever the case may be, or they're listening to people's cell phone conversations in their home and also their apartments, what they'll do is they'll get a subpoena, right? And then they'll say, oh, we had a confidential informant that told us you were, um, for instance, like, say, selling drugs. I don't know if you might sell drugs anymore because everything is legal pretty much here in California besides other things. But they'll say, oh, yeah, we had a confidential informant and you wanted to disclose. Okay, well, who's that a confidential informant? They will never tell you who that confidential informant is because what it is that um, they've been using the Stingray technology to monitor people's activity. I remember in 2015 when I filed my lawsuit and then I had filed a an appeal regards to um, uh, well, the Child's uh, Department of Health and Human Services of uh, CPS. And all of a sudden, I was talking to this attorney. My phone kept breaking up. It kept cutting out. I mean, it's like, well, Damn, I had to stand outside and student get on the reception and kind of find out we had a sheriff officer, sheriff officer right there on the street just sitting there, you know. So that's what they were doing. So I want to show you this um, this lawsuit that the uh, the ACLU had sued uh, the Sacramento Sheriff's Department um, in regards to um, as a public records request to, to see if they had the authorization to monitor people's activity. And um, basically, they're reluctant and everything else. See, this guy who was, um, what's his name, Scott Jones, he was trying, he was running for Senate, but of course, Kamala Harris got the seat. You know, he is so corrupt. He is so corrupt. He, um, you know, you know, Sacramento, is, it's something else. You know, I just want to say, don't want to say too much, but um, Sac Sh Sheriff Department is so corrupt, it's pathetic. You know, they, Instead of hiring security officers or court personnel, they hire the sheriff department as security or as bailiffs in our family court system and as well as our um, civil courts and criminal courts as well. So this is what they had filed. And it says, uh, Sacramento County Sheriff Department responds to petitioner's first set of requests for admission. Okay. And this was, says, responding party, Sac Sheriff Department. And then it goes on to say, it says, um, the request was responsible. Re, uh, response request for admission number one. Respond denies the request for admission number one. Request number two. Admit you, that you have an IMS, IMSI catcher. If you know what an IMIS catcher is, we can go to Wikipedia and it says it's an international mobile subscriber identity catcher or IMSI catcher. It's a telephone eavesdropping device used for intercepting mobile phone track and tracking location data or mobile phone users. Essentially, a fake mobile tower acting between the, the target mobile phone and the service provider real tower. We have one right across the street where I live, and it's considered a man in the middle, MITM attack. The 3G wireless standard mitigates 
some risk due to mutual authentic authentic authentication required from both the handset and the network and see i i know this for a fact because in 2015 when i moved to this area all of a sudden my phone i couldn't get no reception it was echoing it kept i heard somebody talking in the background it would cut out it would cut off i mean it was all kind of stuff and the sheriff and the high patrol would come park in like on the street or they run through the apartments to to um to um, tag license plates and get information it was terrible and i just recently i seen one on the street just sitting there so and one guy he got arrested i told him i said i said i said don't you know about the stingray program he's like nah nah you know most people don't know about that and next thing you know he was on his bicycle and he was doing some illegal activity and two sheriffs pulled up sitting right there just sitting there i kept saying you better be careful you know they gotta you know the onion, he didn't believe it, and sure enough, they came bust through the door two days later. But anyway, so this was the um, the uh, the request for admission. So then, also here, um, they had did another one uh, for Anaheim Police Department to comply with it, um, its duties under the California Public Records Act because they were refusing to get these records. Like I said, they were eavesdropping. If you're a protester, if you're you know, um, whatever it is, or, you know, if you're into some activity, or you feel, if they feel you're a threat, your name goes to the system, and they start monitoring your cell phones, and, and listening in, even if you're not on your cell phone, they can remotely access your phone, and use it as a microphone, and it's everything's going on in your home, I don't care, if you, you turn it off, whatever, they can still eavesdrop in your conversation, and I tell you, um, so I've got some stories to tell, but anyway, it goes on to say here with this um, this lawsuit regards uh, to Public Records Act in Anaheim, which is Southern California, by uh, Disneyland, or actually in Disneyland area, says the, the case concerns the public's, public's right to access basic information about how their local police use surveillance, what device and technology police use to gather information on residents, which uh, that uh, policies govern their use of a particular surveillance technology, what kinds of crimes justify the use of a given surveillance device? What authorization the police get from courts? And what protection, if any, police have put in place to guard privacy and civil liberties? They go on to say that IMSI captures commonly known by the brand name Stingrays for one such device are, are highly invasive surveillance devices. They mimic cell phone towers and force all cell phones within their range to register information regarding the phones, Location, data, and content with the IMSI catcher. IMSI catchers allow law enforcement to indiscriminately uh, track the cell phones of everyone who happens to be within the device significant range, including suspects and bystanders. And this makes me wonder because um, when I first moved in where I'm living now, I had, like I said, my uh, laptop, brand new, nice, beautiful one too. And I had got it in, uh, it was like two and a half years ago from 2015, so 15, 14, it was 13, end of 13. And all of a sudden, my my laptop was on, and now my my son, who he's eight years old now, I homeschool him, so basically he has a, he has a, uh, a, a school computer. So that was on his desktop. And so then I have my laptop, and next thing I know, I'm sitting on the couch watching television, and then my computer shuts off, it shuts back on, and shuts off, and shuts back on, and then it says no signal. And I'm like, what the heck? And my little boy's like, mama, mama, they're messing your computer. But, you know, he's a very smart boy. So then his computer, which was on, because the school computer, and they have a lot of security features on there that you can't really tamper with. So it shuts off as well, shuts back on. It's just a computer, nothing, no electricity, nothing. It shuts off, shut back on. Shuts off, shut back on. Then it said no signal, but whatever it did, it bypassed whoever was trying to, you know, I guess get into that computer or damage or whatever. But my other laptop, which was very nice, you know, it says no signal. So obviously they did something or whoever it did to my computer. But anyway, so back to this. And it says that uh, these devices are capable of not only gathering the phone numbers dialed or called by a cell phone, but can track individuals' location even when they are inside their homes. Using IMSI capture technology, law enforcement agencies can, without the assistance of wireless carriers and signals to cell phones, whether they are located in individual pockets, cars, or residents, and obtain information from the, those phones regardless of who the cell phone tower is. 
what data is on the phone or whether the cell phone owner intends for the uh, phones to be on, off, or transmitting any data whatsoever. So I just want to send this information to you guys. I'm going to, um, um, you can find this this uh, case um, on our Sacramento Bee uh, newspaper, and there's some links on there. And if you want a copy of this stuff, you know, if you can't find it online, I can send it to you, um, of course, you know, for free. <laughs> So this is very, I mean, this is very, very, very important. So this is uh, probably happening to all your, and into your state as well. But for Sacramento, like I said, the ACLU was on it. And they knew what they were doing because we have a lot of people who protest against, you know, corruption and extortion and um, um, due process violations. And so Sacramento, they were using this, you know, on um, people because I can contest that. I see that firsthand. You know where I live. So, anyways, um, I'm rambling on. So, um, I want you to, if you if you like, you know, look this information up and and be informed to know your surroundings, know what's going on. You know, don't feel like, oh yeah, my cell phone. Am I am I going loony over here? No, they are tapping your phones and they do that. You know, it's supposed to be for government surveillance, but. Of course, after 9-11, it made it where as we have no rights no more, basically. And so, um, if this is happening to you in your state, you know, hey, take take the right measures to, you know, um, protect yourself, basically. But anyways, until next time, stay informed.